Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through how I created this smiley animation uh, in Cinema 4D and Illustrator. So let's get straight into it and we're going to start in Illustrator. So I've created this smiley face here. Um, really simple. I just used a circle, um, changed it to a stroke, created some uh, little eyes with some ellipses and created a curved stroke here as well. Now, the important thing to do here is once you've created those circles, because if I was to show you now, um, and I set that to a stroke, that's not really a shape, that's a path. So when you've got your smiley face set up, just make sure you go up to object, expand, hit OK, and now you can see that you've got an actual shape because it's got those path outlines. Um, going around the circle. So I've got my smiley face set up. I'm going to go File, Save As. Now this is important, just save it wherever. Um, but you want to change your version from Illustrator 2020 or whatever version you're using to Illustrator 8. Now I'm not sure the kind of the reasoning behind this, but basically any version past Illustrator 8, uh, Cinema 4D just doesn't work with. Um, I could be wrong. I haven't really tried it, but that's how I've always learned it, that Illustrator 8 is the version to save it as for Cinema 4D. So save it as that, uh, hit OK. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already got it saved. And now we're going to head straight into Cinema. So I'm going to start a new document here and I'm going to go file merge, find my smiley face document, hit OK. And here it's going to ask you the scale. Now, if you've got a specific scale in mind, you can set that here. It's also going to give you this option to connect splines. Now, uh, it sounds like a good idea. When I've used it in the past, sometimes it can play up a little bit. So I'm going to leave it unticked and run you guys through the process of how I connect splines um, and then make it work. So we're going to hit OK. Uh, first, you're not going to see the smiley face because it's put it off to the side. So what we can do is just go into the coordinates and zero out the position on the X and Y. And now it's perfectly in the center of our composition. So it's given us a few paths here. Uh, we've got four ones for the eyes, uh, ones for the smiley face, and then there's two for the outside. So these are the ones we're going to want to connect. So if I was just to show you what would happen if I didn't connect it and put it into an extrude, uh, you'll see why we need to connect them. So I'm going to drag that in and you can see it's given us that, which is not what we're after. So I'm going to drag it out the extrude and essentially it's as easy as selecting both of them, right clicking and connecting objects and deleting. Uh, what we're then going to do is just drag all the paths into that null object. Um, by the way, I'm, I can't remember if I just skipped over that bit, but to create a null, all you have to do is press Alt G whilst you're selecting something like that, or just come up to here, left click and hold and just grab a null from there. Essentially, that's just a group to keep everything under. So now we've got all our paths in one group. Let's drag it under the extrude and we're going to tick this button here. I don't know how to pronounce this. Hierarchical? Hierarchical? Ugh. Hierarchical. Well, not the, I don't know, whatever. So we're going to tick that and essentially what that does is extrudes every single path within that group. So it saves us just um, it saves us from having to create an extrude for every single path. So now we've just got one extrude. I'm going to set this to 50 centimeters and I'm just going to add a fillet cap on both of these on the front and the back and maybe just set that to like two and then up the steps to about three, which is just going to smooth those fillet caps out. And the reasoning for adding those is just that any surface in real life has always got a tiny bit of a bevel on it. Um, this just helps us get more interesting reflections and just makes it more photorealistic, even though you would never come across a smiley spinning face. So we've got our extruded smiley face. Now we want to actually make it spin. So I'm going to set up a camera first. I'm using Corona renderer, so I'm going to set up a Corona camera. You set up whatever camera you'd like. Depends what renderer you're using. They all do pretty much the same job. So I'm going to zero out all the coordinates here and then decrease the Z so that it zooms us out. And now our smiley face is right in the center of our composition. 
Um, I'm then going to go back to our smiley and I'm just going to rename that by pressing enter, typing in smiley. And we're then going to grab the rotate tool. So this is up at the top or R if you like to use your shortcuts. Make sure we're set at zero on the timeline. Hit the keyframe button, go to 90. And then if we click the green circle on the rotation, hold shift, that's going to let us go up in increments of 10 degrees until we've done a 360. We're then going to press the red key again. That's going to set another keyframe. And if we press the play button now, you see we have a spinning smiley face. You do, however, notice that, first of all, it's not rotating from the centre because I can see it's kind of moving back and forth a tiny bit. And also it's easing in and easing out of the animation, which kind of takes away that looping effect of it. So we want it to be a bit more seamless. So we're going to address that first by coming up to Window, Timeline F Curve, and if you used if you've used After ugh, if you've used After Effects before, this will make sense to you. It's kind of like your speed graph about how the animation eases in and eases out. If we press Command A, that's going to select all our keyframes, and then if we just press this button here, that's going to set them to a linear keyframe. The next problem is. Uh, that our axis is not in the center. So if I press this button in the top right, that's gonna open all four windows and you can see that our axis is at the front of the smiley face. So if we press this button on the left hand side, that's gonna let us enable our axis and we can move this around without moving the object. So we know that our smiley face is 50 centimeters deep. So if we come to our Z axis on the position, and set this to 25, we know that is now in the dead center of that smiley face. So if we play this back now, we can see we've got a much more linear animation and it's rotating from the dead center. Okay, cool. So we've got the simple animation set up. Now we just need to light and texture it. So I lit mine just using a simple HDRI. Um, so I'm gonna grab a Corona Sky, go to object and change this to HDRI. And then I believe I did use this one here, but um, I'm gonna use one from HDRI Haven, which if you haven't checked out, is right here. It is a great free resource for getting HDRIs. I pretty much get one of mine from there and they're free. So, you know, can't really, can't really have a bad thing to say about that. So I'm gonna grab this one, which is the Venice Sunset. I'm going to drag this in, press no, because I don't want to set it, set that at the destination. Um, and then I'm going to untick visible directly. So if we just did a quick preview of this, we've now got a very basically lit scene. We're going to want to apply a material now. So I'm going to go to Corona, new material, and untick diffuse and tick reflection. So I had like an iridescent kind of material, you can see here. Um, which gives it that really nice vibrant color to it. Um, although that is also an added effect, which we'll talk about in a minute. So essentially what we do to achieve that is tick our reflection, go to texture and add a for now. Now a for now is basically a way of um, adjusting how the material interacts with light, dependent on the angle you're looking at that object. So if I just set this to preview really quickly, uh, and I'm going to apply, apply the material. Cool, so you can see that we're getting reflections on the inside of our smiley face. I'm actually just going to scrub through this so we got more of an angled look at it. Um, but if I was to drag in the black slider, you can see how now that's adjusting the reflections that the object takes, that the material takes. Um, and basically what that's doing is only reflecting dependent on the angle you're looking at that object. So it's kind of hard to explain, but you can tinker with it and you will kind of get a rough understanding of how it works. So if we drag that white in, we're now getting brighter reflections. So you can tinker with that how you want. When I did the material, I left it as it is. So you don't really need to adjust that. Uh, what I am gonna do though, is go out of that for now and adjust the glossiness to about 0 0.6. That's just gonna smooth out the reflections. Um, which is just gonna spread the light across the object a bit better as well. So now what we're gonna to wanna to do is go to our for now, and we're gonna click this arrow here and put it within a filter. 
Now this then gives us the settings to enable grad bleh, to enable gradation curves, which essentially lets us affect the red, green, and blue channels of that for now. So we're going to tick those. And what I'm actually going to do here as well is just right click on this here and open window. Now this will basically update as we change these parameters. So what I'm going to do is go into red, drag this up, and you can already see in our preview of the render how that's introducing more red reflections into that object. And essentially now it's just personal preference, just tinkering these settings to get an effect you like. Um, you can see how as we start to minus this red value on the right hand side, it's introducing blues into the bottom of our for now. So now we're getting this red and blue split in the reflections. And yeah, like I said, you can tinker with these however you like. Um, when I did it, I believe I had like a blue and red effect going on. Or blue and purple even. Um, yeah, this is just a case of tinkering with it until you kind of get the colours that you want out of that material. So I'm going to try to get a blue and purple. Um, and it can kind of take a bit to wrap your head around how this works. Um, if you're previewing it, you can kind of get an easier look at how that's working. So now we're getting these blue and purples, which are quite nice. Um, and yeah, it's just a case of tinkering with all these different channels. Okay, so I could tinker with that for ages, um, but I'm gonna leave it like that for now. And what we can do is because we put this into a filter is actually adjust the saturation. So if I increase that, that'll bring more color into it. Uh, I'm gonna leave it about 25 and you could affect the contrast. Uh, up in the contrast tends to bring out other colors as well. So now we've got this kind of like purple to blue to lilac -y kind of color. Um, and then you can also affect the hues as well, so. Let's have a look. Yeah, now we've got purple to light blue back to purple again. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. Um, and then the last touch to this to really brighten up the reflections is to increase that IOR to about 10. You can see from the material straight away that just boosts all the reflections that that material takes. Cool. So now we've got a basic material set up for this. And the final touch for this is to go into our Corona interactive rendering, enable bloom and glare. And this essentially basically picks up on the bright spots of the material and we'll then um, just add like bloom to it, which is like, um, it's kind of like a glow, I suppose. It's basically a glow. Um, so what we need to do is lower the threshold. So I'm going to put about 0 0.3. Um, basically, that just means it's less picky about which areas it decides to glow for you. And then I'm going to crank the glare intensity all the way up to about 50 and the bloom intensity to about 20. That's going to take a minute to just render that effect. But when it does, we should get that nice glow effect there. And you can tinker with that as much as you want. You could lower the threshold so more of the material is getting bloom and glared. Um, and yeah, that is essentially it. So. If we play that through and we just pick out a few little frames for that animation, we can see how that's affecting our material. So we got a really bright glow there. As it rotates around, we're starting to get some more of those blue highlights as well, which is nice. And we're getting glows on the inside and outside. Spin this around. And obviously this will depend on a few things. First of all, on the HDR you're using and how you've set up your material, uh, what colors you've put in using the RGB channels, uh, how strong you've made the reflections with the IOR, as well as the glossiness. So you can really customize uh, this material, which is what I like about it. Um, and yeah, just play with it, have fun. And then now it's just a case of rendering it out and you should get somewhere near this render that I created the other day. Cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. And I'd love to see work that you create with this and with this tutorial. So make sure to tag me uh, on Instagram, on Twitter. It's all the same handle. I am Ross Mason. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video. Oh, and if you haven't already, hit the uh, subscribe button down there. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.